Once again, good afternoon, everyone. And it is a very special honour to be here uh, for all of us in Knock, in this uh, special and beautiful place. Dear friends, on the 7th of October last year, I was travelling from a funeral in the South Donegal area, going back to the parish, uh, when I received a call uh, that an explosion had taken place at the petrol station and shop in the village of Chrysla. Uh, I was totally shocked at that phone call. And then, uh, an hour later, I arrived at the site of the explosion and I immediately became very self-conscious that the scale of the tragedy unfolding before my eyes was larger than anything I had ever experienced before, nor was it something I ever thought uh, that I would experience in life. The initial scene was one of tremendous shock, horror, disbelief, and it seemed somewhat surreal. And yet the fear of the worst to come was staring us in the face as I prayed over the bodies of those who were first removed from the building. In many sense, dear friends, it was as if I was living in a parallel universe. What I was witnessing did not seem real, but sadly, it was something that was very real. The silence was deafening, yet I was surrounded by lots and lots of people, hundreds and hundreds of people, and, not yet, and, and you couldn't even hear a bird song. You couldn't hear a bird singing. Uh, the only thing you could hear was the occasional rattle of machinery, fallen debris, or people saying uh, to stand back, the moving of tractors, lorries, and, and so on. And that was what you could hear. Uh, it was uh, something that one would never want to witness, nor you feel is one, something that one should never witness. One of the Northern Ireland Air Ambulance personnel who was at the scene said to me as we stood there, this was larger than anything that he himself had ever experienced. Those first minutes of witnessing the scene, that one hour later when I arrived, are forever with me. I see the daily image of that scene uh, often it shoots through my mind. One of the first things I did when I arrived there was to speak to the last of the injured to be removed to hospital and others who were in that explosion. My initial reaction was to pray for the safety of those who went straight into the building without assessing risk to their own lives. The hands of Jesus Christ at work in that building that was still continuing uh, to partially collapse, uh, searching through the rubble, uh, trying to find those uh, who were missing. I thought, and my, I suppose, other reaction was, how am I going to be able to assist the people who are suffering, who have lost their loved ones, and yet didn't know that their loved ones were even in the building, didn't know if their loved ones were alive or dead, as many of the bodies were not recovered until late into the night and early into the next morning of Saturday. From the outset, I was very aware of the heartache, the challenge we were facing, including the fact uh, that people did not know really what was happening. A sense of trepidation hit me momentarily. And for a few seconds, I became so afraid of my own limited, uh, limited abilities. But then I drew on my faith, asking Jesus to ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit down upon us, and asking Our Lady, particularly Our Lady of Knock, in a very special way to wrap her mantle around us all. Our Lady of Knock, I believe, was very much present to us, uh, present to us silently, uh, silently unspoken as she appeared here in Knock, but yet with her people in that silence. My first public response in those hours 
uh, to the outside world was to ask all uh, to pray for our community, asking those there present and especially asking those who were a distance from us, focusing through media and social media and asking people to pray. And I reached out to a few close friends I knew uh, who could help me and give me guidance, uh, who knew more than I had and who had better abilities and different abilities to me and who were physically and emotionally detached from the situation. And I knew that they could guide me. I knew they could help me. And isn't it so wonderful to see a little child uh, coming to greet us? Uh, within those first few minutes, my dear friends, in Chrysler on that evening, time was very precious. Help was necessary. And it was important for me to reach out to others, and important for all of us uh, to reach out to others, especially uh, others who had that physical and emotional detachment of uh, which I did not have. I only left the scene that evening at one stage uh, to go back to the church, uh, the church in the village where adoration was taking place uh, from that morning from 9 a.m. Dear friends, People were there adorning Jesus in adoration as others made their way uh, to God. People there praying. They found the explosion. They felt it in the church. And on that evening, I raised the monstrance in blessing in the church and held it towards the site of the explosion to pray for those who were missing, those who were injured, and those involved in the search and recovery. Dear friends, while the first thing I did uh, publicly, that call to prayer, seemed the natural obvious thing to do, but I knew that we very much needed prayer. I knew and was aware of the scale of loss, while others were not. The scale of the tragedy was shocking in such a small village. The time ahead, I believed, and it was going to be extremely difficult. So I called for that prayer as a forewarning uh, to those families outside the cordon, uh, to those families who were in their homes and loved ones, that we were facing uh, the greatest possible tragedy and that that had fallen on us. Uh, by calling for prayer, I was not specifying uh, this, uh, the, the actual tragedy or giving specific details but uh, specifying uh, the scale, because it was important uh, be, uh, to drip feed that information uh, so that people could absorb it slowly and not be totally overwhelmed uh, by it. At a time such as this, in the times of tragedy, words are extremely important. And I was trying that evening when I called for prayer to gently guide the community and prepare people. Dear friends, at the same time, I wanted to shape a tangible outreach centre to give focus and solace to families, to the people of our small community, and beyond it for their inev inevitable sorrow and grief that was to come. This, dear friends, was not without challenge. Such was the media interest. Yet I knew I had to engage with media, while at the same time, all I wanted to do was to be there with the families, uh, to be there with the people uh, who had lost so much. The accident robbed us of 10 beautiful souls, left a number of people injured, families bereaved, others in extreme grief, a community devastated by loss, and a lot of people traumatized. I believed it was important to get the correct message out through media that we were a community going through our darkest days and hours, that we were a small, quiet and quaint community, and that we needed space uh, to grieve. And I believe, for the most part, journalists greatly respected and gave us that space and also showed empathy with us. Dear friends, together with my parishioners in cooperation and collaboration and with the community at large, um, we were able together uh, to make a pathway through that grief, a pathway with Jesus present to us. It was difficult. The heart had been ripped out of our small community, 
Uh, but I was doing the same as what so many other priests, ministers, clergy, and others uh, do on a daily basis around our country, have done in tragedies before Chrysler and have done in tragedies since, uh, working with parishioners, uh, trying to uh, shine the light of Christ on the situation uh, to make a pathway that would bring us through the tragedy. That was my motivation. God was my motivator, and I relied on God, and I relied on people uh, who had different talents uh, to my own. Uh, people from our parish, from the wider community, clergy from all denominations, family and friends. Dear friends, at first, on that evening, it was thought that the numbers dead would be in double digits. My first approach was to give a tangible outworking and a physical demonstration of those who lost their lives. I did that uh, by asking the bishop, Bishop Allen, uh, who was a pillar of support, uh, to light a candle representing each life that had been lost on the first Saturday evening. One, a sanctuary candle for each person and a white candle uh, for those uh, who remained in hospital, which we kept lit until the last person uh, came home. Uh, dear friends, the candle symbolized the person, but also symbolized God's presence with his people. There was God in our midst in this tsunami of suffering. Uh, God saying, I am with you. We kept the light and heat on in the church, and we had the rosary each night at 9 p.m. Uh, in that week, and people from all religious denominations, including their clergy, came and prayed with us the rosary, that powerful prayer. Dear friends, I often think of the rosary as being like a rope that has knots on. If you try and pull yourself out of a hole with a rope, it is a very difficult job to do, particularly difficult it would be for me, but if it is not, you can pull yourself up on those beads, and the rosary is for us pulling ourselves uh, towards God and towards heaven. Support came from everywhere uh, to our village. People responded in great, with great generosity and in great abundance. Support came from parents who lost children in tragedy, children who lost parents, uh, from children in schools, and from all places. Uh, uh, that was so very important to us. We were in a tsunami of suffering and tragedy, but there came a tidal wave of support, and it came also uh, from here, from Knock. Uh, so many people having masses prayed here, the clergy from here offering support, and also from all over the country, from the United Kingdom and from Irish communities abroad. And let us not underestimate that support. The people who, in their own homes, uh, sat down and wrote little letters and cards which came in their thousands to our schools, to our parish, and to our families. The thousands of messages and so on uh, from people all over the country and far beyond it uh, lifted us up. We felt we were being helped by people everywhere in their hearts and, and in your prayers. Dear friends, the most comforting, one of the most comforting things for me was when Bishop Allen and Bishop Andrew and Archbishop Eamon Martin uh, were present with us in our community. We prayed with young people for their friends who were injured in the hospital. Dear friends, if Chrysler learns us anything, it is how important prayer is, it is imp how important a presence is, and it is important for us to reach out beyond ourselves to get help. Before I began the first funeral, I went to the site of the tragedy on the Tuesday morning, and a member of the Gardaí came with me to the site of the explosion, and we both joined in prayer. Uh, that strengthened me for the week that lay ahead, and then I met a young boy on his way to school, a young boy happy to be going to school. And I felt then that is hope. God has given us hope uh, through that young man 
at that very moment. And we must continue to hope, I felt, and to do everything possible for the bereaved and live for the living, as I prayed for strength for the funeral masses that lay ahead uh, to commend to God the beautiful souls that were on their way to God. The teachers and staff of our school were fantastic and opened those schools in those to open the schools in those days to provide a place for children to be together. It was so important to be together. I noticed in the eyes of growing men and women and children that night, you could see the sense of grief in their eyes. You could see that forlornness uh, within their eyes. And that is why I felt it was important to keep our church on to keep the lights on, to keep the heat on, and to gather people in prayer so that they could be together. I knew that the psychological services would arrive, that the professional services would arrive, but the first challenge was uh, to bring people together uh, before those services even reached us. Many people uh, came to our community. Uh, many people came uh, to put their arms around us and help us. I want to mention our president, Michael D. Higgins, uh, who showed for us a very fatherly care. Uh, the support and comfort that was received from him by the families was something that was very much appreciated, as did other political leaders and so on come. But for me, the greatest support of all uh, was from those uh, who took the time uh, to have masses said for us, to have prayers for us, uh, to, have, um, to, to write to us, and, and so on. Uh, Pope Francis kept us in his prayers and also sent us uh, rosaries. I could feel that warmth, care, and compassion also from those in our media and all who were present. Dear friends, I believe our church is strongest, is at its strongest when it is out among its community, caring for people and united with others from other uh, church denominations. Our church is, its, is at its best as a field hospital at the heart of our community, as Pope Francis reminds us. Uh, at the heart of our community, with the strength of that pillar of the Eucharist and Our Lady. Our church is not just the building blocks or mortar, nice and all as our church buildings are. Our church is the people gathered in the buildings and spreading out into the community uh, that care. Chrysler proves to the world that our church is still our strongest bond, our home within our communities. Dear friends, for many, many people, the church was the guiding light through the darkest days of the tragedy in Chrysler that binded us together and continues to be for so many people who come to pray or to light a candle or to sit in silence. Our church of St. Michael's and Chrysler, like churches all over the country, are places to be at one with God and with one another, are havens of peace and comfort to so many, as is this basilica and its sacred grounds. I came here to pray the rosary in the Church of the Apparition uh, the first time I left Chrysler after the tragedy. And then I joined in Mass with Father Michael McCullough here one of the evenings, the first Mass I prayed at outside of that week in Chrysler. Here I gained, like so many before me and so many who will come after me, so much comfort, so much peace, and so much solace from this holy ground and oasis of peace, where the Lamb of God is truly present on their altars of this, uh, sanct of this sanctuary, uh, where uh, the light of Christ continues to shine for us. Chrysler, my dear friends, is a small village that few heard of unless you could sing Cutting the Corn in Chrysler or heard of it, and many of you might have. I didn't. I couldn't sing. I can't sing. Uh, but a cruel tragedy befell us. And we have survived, and we continue to survive, and we are surviving, and we are becoming stronger with the help of your prayers and your support, with the help of our faith, our togetherness, and people caring for one another. 
Our hearts will never forget those that were taken from us, but our spirit is strong, and we are thankful to the Lord for making us stronger, for guiding us through the darkness to a better place on the pathway of life. Dear friends, maybe today we can remember it is not the tragedies that we encounter in life that shapes us. It is how we overcome these challenges with our faith and with the help of others and become stronger in our faith and uh, become more truer uh, to God. That is how God wants us to be. God uh, asks us uh, to shape ourselves on Jesus Christ, to reach out in care and compassion to others. The message of God is simple. It was very relevant in Chrysler. The message of God is as relevant today as when it was first delivered. Let us reach out to others, care for others, and reach beyond ourselves. And many of the families in Chrysler did that. They reached beyond them, themselves to attend the wakes of others, to attend the funerals of others, to attend the month's minds of others. Tomorrow, Oma, uh, there's, uh, there's a significant anniversary in Oma tomorrow, as we all know. And one of the people who first came to help us was Claire Gallagher, a young girl who had been blinded in the Oma bomb, who is now married with her children. And she came to play at a concert to give thanks to the emergency and rescue services and to bring the families together with them for the first time after the Chrysler tragedy. Dear friends, this novena is so very special. It is also... Uh, on the programme, there are people for the week ahead uh, who have reached out f uh, beyond themselves, people who face great tragedy like Geraldine Mullen, uh, Elma Walsh and others. Dear friends, let us take the message from here today uh, to reach out beyond ourselves, to place our troubles in the hands of God and Our Lady uh, who will take care for them and to care for others in whatever practical ways uh, that we can. Uh, I want to thank you, and I ask you to please continue uh, to keep our community uh, in your prayers. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.